ओके सो नीचे हाउ मेनी आर देयर फाइव और सिक्स फाइव सिक्स सेवन दीज आर ऑल वी हैव राइट आह स्टिल लो वी हैव एट पार्टिसिपेंट्स आई गेस्ट मार्क्स ओके सो आई एम जस्ट स्टार्टिंग ओके so before we before i even start with this uh, i want one of you to and nidja by the way chat is disabled um i'm unable to send any message in chat so i would want one of your responses at least to continue otherwise i wouldn't know if you guys are there with me right so i would request uh, you guys to unmute and speak if a question is being asked okay so before i even start yes, how many of you know the difference between a curriculum yeah thank you neeja a curriculum vitae and the resume can any of you tell me even if you are wrong it's totally fine the difference between a cv or a curriculum vitae and a resume or even if you don't know you can say unmute and say don't know that's fine any of you here or can you guess the difference between a curriculum vitae and a resume because first things first you know people are still confused and based on my experience of teaching and training students they tell me that uh, they don't even know the that uh, two are different they thought both are the same right so i want you all to know the difference between these two before i even start with the session so how many of you know the difference between a curriculum vitae and a resume any guesses yes chal please uh, uh sorry a uh, resume is more concise whereas a cv has mm -hmm. more of your details and expense one second sorry sorry so sorry Charles, could you repeat what you said? Uh, a resume tends to be more concise, while while uh, a CV has your full background in detail. So. Very good. That is one of the important points. Resume is more like a, a brief summary of your experiences, whereas CV is more detailed. Very good. Any other in terms of application, where do you use a CV and where do you use a resume? Anybody or Charles? So I've given you a clue, which is the next difference is based on the application. You don't use CV for every job that you apply, right? Uh, and you don't use the resume for every job that you apply. So there are differences in application as well. Anybody wants to guess before I give out the answer myself? Charles, why don't you guess? I'm not sure. okay a cv is more for academic uh, applications like if you want to be a professor or you know a research assistant in in academia in a college okay that is where you use a cv but resume is more for corporate jobs okay so that is the second most important difference that you all must know uh, is based on the application a uh, cv is more for academia right uh, professor jobs and all that uh, and uh, resume is for corporate jobs right which is exactly what you all need right so that is one most important difference and uh, the next one is uh, similar to what charles already mentioned uh, the length of the curriculum which is is standard you don't tweak your cv for every job that you are applying to right it remains standard because it's a complete detail about your uh, Uh, academic credentials experience and everything right so you don't tweak or modify your curriculum vitae according to the job that you are applying to whereas a resume you are supposed to tweak your resume according to the job that you are applying to right so that is the uh, third most important difference so are we all clear can i have a thumbs up if you are following me the first is the length like charles rightly pointed out that uh, cv more detailed um 
and uh, closely related to that is also uh, uh, the fact that you do not modify a cv it remains standard because it's it contains all the low level details you know to the current job what all did you i mean what were the activities that you carried out in your previous job to the last details right so uh, it contains all the details right so you don't tweak it according to the job that you're applying to it remains constant whereas a resume you modify it based on the job that you're applying to and uh, uh, third most important difference is is in terms of the application right uh, where you apply i mean you use a cv to apply to jobs in academia whereas you use a resume uh, to apply to jobs in the corporate field are we all clear with this Yes, ma'am. Do you have a thumbs up or anything or any discussions here? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So proceeding to the next slide. See now, resume. Uh, okay. Why do you need a resume? We all know uh, without a resume, I mean that's the first stage of screening that happens, right? So even before they meet you, you know they only have a look at your. and uh, they decide if you are a right fit or not so a resume basically uh, uh, of course you all know what goes into a resume okay uh, but then if you put all that into three different you know three umbrellas what would they be so i repeat my question you all know what goes into your resume your work experience internship experience if at all you have any your education your qualifications everything so if you basically put all these into three different umbrellas what would they be okay first is let me let me give you the first example the first is knowledge uh, okay i mean first point that i was looking at knowledge so resume gives a picture to the recruiter about the knowledge that you have gained it could be your academic credentials your certificate courses the seminars that you have attended the papers that you have presented so you are knowledgeable in all these things right so the first is knowledge what are the other two i see a lot of names here participants here i would like it if one of you all you know i mean if you all interact with me okay this being an online session i really can't proceed unless i've heard a response from you also uh, please i'd like it if you all respond roshni ram kishor vinit uh, okay experience absolutely so experience uh, if i can modify that it's the skill that you have gained right so first is knowledge second is skills so experience is where you apply the knowledge you have gained Uh, at work right so you learn it uh, uh, you learn the skills as well you know the practical application of knowledge becomes a skill so fantastic so knowledge skills and the third most important thing which students fail to display in a resume mostly so all your most of your resume i'm sure you know your knowledge comes through your skill come through uh, you you all don't miss you know displaying your knowledge and skill set but the third most important thing is what makes you stand out from others or what is unique to you right so vinith is different from lokeshwaran lokeshwaran is different from ram kishor okay and neerja has her own set of uh, skill set and unique characteristics that define her that define neerja right now what is the third most important thing that should come through in a resume but unfortunately most students do not uh, you know display it what is that and he guesses so first like you all said is knowledge uh, i mean i uh, told you knowledge second like uh, vinith said is skills right? uh, absolutely right the third thing that should come through in your resume but doesn't come through in most cases what is it your passion any sorry your interest or uh, passion who said that very close charles again okay interest or passion um okay interest or passion very interesting but that's not the word i was looking at okay it's your attitude right 
so are you a problem solver are you an analytical thinker you know are you a person who comes to conclusions logically rationally you know uh, not just going by emotions are you a, a deep thinker rational thinker so the third most important to one is attitude so complete resume should give the recruiter uh, an idea about your knowledge your skill set and mainly your attitude okay um now again one other basic question uh, you all have heard these terms i'm sure hard skills and soft skills now what is the difference between hard skill and soft skill can you give me an example or define soft skills we all know or what 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 are hard skills and what are soft skills and what is the difference anybody because this is quite important because people only mention hard skills in the resume not many mention soft skills but what we are looking at because I, we are as in uh, i have been an hr recruiter and i have been an hr manager assistant hr manager so i have actually interviewed people and looked at resumes okay so what we look at is your uh, soft skills also you know we give equal weightage to your soft skills also or can anybody give me an example of a soft skill even if you can't define what is a hard skill what is a soft skill can any of you just give me an example of a hard skill or a soft skill technical skills or technical skills and uh, anything related to our education or hard skills and uh, skills like communication analytical thinking problem solving comes under soft skills absolutely very good neeja very good so basically hard skills are measurable okay you know you can quantify hard skills but soft skills uh you cannot really measure soft skills and they are transferable to any job irrespective of the job that you do right so whatever job you do communication skills are important analytical thinking is important uh, creativity is important problem solver all that is important so these are the basic differences between hard skills and soft skills but sadly students uh, do not emphasize much on the soft skills but for a course like yours mba i am an mba from anna university i am an alumnus from anna university right so these soft skills are what make you stand out from the rest okay uh, your communication skills some may be really good at technical but when it comes to communication skills they may lag behind you know uh, compared to the others right uh, so uh, i would say um, a balance of both is really important because hard skills are equally important first you only clear the technical round then only you appear for the hr round right uh, but some people are so good in convincing that they actually know something even if they don't know that again is an art right so i would say a balance of both is really important and uh, this famous analogy i heard in a ted talk okay so let's take a pizza so if your pizza base is the hard skill whatever you learn in college or whatever you learn in your courses uh, but we choose the pizza only based on the toppings right uh, so those toppings would be your soft skills okay so that is what a recruiter first looks at you know your attitude is very important right um so hard skills and soft skills i'm sure all of you know the difference now and uh, please uh, the importance of you know displaying or highlighting soft skills in a resume uh, uh, cannot be emphasized more you know so please so like i said your knowledge uh, your skills and attitude all these three go into a good resume now uh, can you all read this objective and tell me what you think about it can it be made better uh, before that how many of you have a work experience prior work experience or all of you are freshers or how is this batch is the is it a mix of both um, work experience and freshers neerja a uh, mix ma we have people with both work experience and also freshers great 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 so uh, having an objective is very important because like uh, even i had a work experience you know when i did my mba i came with a prior work experience so when you have an objective uh, it gives a very clear picture to the recruiter what exactly you are looking at so it makes saves time for the recruiter a lot actually so it's always good to have an objective especially for you guys 
MBA and, and if you have a work experience, you must have an objective, right? Don't just start with your, uh, uh, you know, um, all other education, uh, educational background and all. It's always important and good to have an objective. Now, read this objective and tell me what you think about it. Is it good? Do you think it is good or can we change it? Can we change any part of it or it's good to go? Or what modifications we made to this objective? I'd like to know your thoughts. So it says goal oriented individual with an MBA seeking entry level business management position with XYZ Investment Bank, bringing deep familiarity with managing finance and increasing company revenue. Sounds good. I hope we are all on that slide, right? Objective, that particular slide. Nijija, we are seeing that slide, right? Because sometimes there is a gap. Yes, I keep yes, on lecturing yes, something and the slide is somewhere else. Yeah, thank you, Nijija. Yeah. It is good. What do you think? Charles? So the entry level can be avoided. Okay. Now. Entry level can be avoided. Okay. Anything else? Okay. See, um, adding a company name is fine, but if you ask me personally, I've seen no uh, uh, persons having an objective uh, saying I want to work in, you know, Infosys Technologies Limited, because I would personally say, you know, you you uh, emphasize the area that you want to work in but not a particular company see you can change the company name when you're applying to that particular company which people tend to do but i would suggest don't do it you uh, emphasize only the area like for example i want to work in investment banking because i come with a rather than saying i want to work in this particular uh, company i i would say avoid that right uh, instead, you can say, you can mention the position that you aspire to work in, right? I want to be a business level, uh, yeah, entry level could be avoided, but it gives an idea that you're a fresher, okay? So, um, skip, uh, uh, if I would say, uh, skip mentioning, you know, company names like this, XYZ Investment Bank, do not do that. <coughs> uh, you're all uh, in sync, right? Listening to me? Yes. So I said the position is fine. Uh, your area of expertise is fine. Mentioning your area of expertise is fine, but avoid mentioning a particular company like this X Y Z. You know, so be more open, right? So even if, if at all you are applying to, let's say, Infosys for a finance position, don't say I want to work in your company. Have a gen more generic objective. I'm looking for this particular position, and uh, I come with this expertise. Are we all good? Can I proceed? Yes, ma'am, we can understand. Okay, so I'll proceed to the next slide. So an objective tells the recruiter about you. It sets you apart from others, right? Uh, and it is written in a simple language. So either write one that stands out or do away with it. Do not have an objective unless you think it's really good and it gives a very clear picture about you and avoid having very long objectives. OK, not uh, more than three sentences, I would say for an objective, right? Uh, because you know how long will the recruiter spend time uh, of the five or seven seconds he's he spends, you know, shortlisting a resume. You can't give him paragraphs and paragraphs in an objective to read. Right. So make it very short, not more than three. And please maintain a simple language as much as possible. You know, a resume is not the place where you can show off your language skills. Right. Uh, instead, there is a place where you can show off your skills. We'll talk about that in the last slide. OK, so either have a very good, clear objective or do not write an objective at all. But for you guys, MBA, especially the ones with the work experience, uh, you if you are changing your career path, Please, please, uh, uh, you know, uh, specify which stream you want to get into. Uh, and Nirja, you also have dual degrees, right? I did uh, HR and marketing, but I was looking at HR jobs. So uh, you you also have dual degrees, right, Nirja? Yes, ma'am, we also have dual degrees. Right, right. So it's very good to have an objective. Okay, so I want to get into marketing or data analytics. 
you know, or finance. So please have an objective, but not more than uh, three sentences max. So these are the different sections um, uh, in a resume. It's good to have all these sections and then this order. Okay. Uh, now, what do you think is the ideal uh, page numbers, number of pages that is desired in a resume? Page numbers. Number How many number. page numbers can you have in? Sorry. Six. Two, two Could I? Uh, okay. Two is uh, okay, but the most ideal is one page. So in IFIM Business School, where I started teaching, uh, we are very particular about one page resumes. Okay. So anything beyond one page, uh, unless you have had like five plus years of experience, we don't really recommend uh, two pages resume so as much as possible in fact after the at the end of the session i'll be sharing some good resumes uh, some template that you can actually uh, you know follow for your yours as well so uh, i don't know if anna university has prescribed any particular template but i will also share at the end of the session you know some templates that you can follow so there all these are beautifully fit in one page only so we do not like anything more than a one page and two page maximum. Suppose uh, uh, any of you, your, your classmates have five plus years of experience or three, three plus years of experience and want to highlight a lot of things. In that case, you can have a two page resume. A CV can be long, five or six pages, a curriculum we take. That can go, go for even seven or eight pages. But a resume is ideally of one page. Okay, so I'll show you how you can fit it in one page also. Uh, maybe I'll uh, get one of your contacts and have all the materials sent. You can glance through it. Okay. Um, now tell me, suppose uh, Nirja attends a debate competition. Okay. Now Nirja, would you put that under co-curricular or extracurricular? You attend a speaking or electu elocution competition or a debate, some uh, speaking activity and you win a prize. So you will put that under co-curricular or extracurricular, Nirja? I think I will put it under co-curricular activities, ma'am. Why? Uh, because speaking is something related with uh, a good communication skill. And uh, if we are uh, good in that, uh, it can be called as a co-curricular and not an extracurricular. Things like painting uh, and singing can come under extracurricular. Absolutely, absolutely bang on because in my uh, uh, again experience people students confuse this a lot. Uh, I teach at a law school here. So they put debate under extracurricular. Now, that, why do, debate is part of what you're doing litigation. You're going to be a litigating lawyer. This is what you'll be doing in courts, right? So your debate and mood courts is not extracurricular. It is co-curricular. So uh, like Nirja mentioned, MBA, like sales or finance, whatever uh, stream of, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, whatever field you choose, you are going to be communicating, not just communicating, but persuasive communication, negotiation. Do you all agree? So all these debate and elocution is uh, gives you an experience on persuasive speaking. So that would come under co-curricular and not your extracurricular. OK, so now I have another question for you all. OK, let's say you um, you won an award in ninth standard. OK, uh, ninth or eighth. OK, let's say uh, singing, singing or dancing, anything. Now you won this award in eighth or ninth standard. Can you put that under awards, awards and uh, you know certifications? There is one last column that you can have achievements, awards or achievements. Can you put it under awards or achievements? What do you think? Can I give no, ma'am. Okay, Nirja says no. Was it Charles who was speaking? Sorry. No, uh, since uh, it is uh, not job oriented, we can try to avoid it. Okay. Ranjit says since it's uh, not job oriented, we can try and avoid it. Okay. Um, why no, Nirja? Why can't you put it? Uh, if you have dancing, dancing uh, at a UG 
time uh, we can put it on but 8th or 9th is uh, is like a school grade and uh, had we got something like a school topper or a state rank holder uh, in public exams that we can add in our resume is so singing competition at a school level i think it's uh, not uh, worth to be added okay okay so i would say it depends on the achievement like you said okay so if it's something some incredible achievement for example one boy asked me in ninth he visited uh, nasa okay uh, so that is definitely a feat which everybody don't you know you don't just send everybody to nasa so he has been through a selection process and he was qualified okay he went underwent some training and he was qualified among the 10 students from his school of 800 or 1000 people to go to nasa so i said that is an achievement that makes you stand out from others so please put it in your resume under achievements and maybe uh, as a last point you know the least significant so the order of the resume the order in which you put the achievements also matters you know put the most relevant or recent ones in the beginning and then this can definitely go under achievements because you it's something great something significant everybody doesn't just you know qualify to go to nasa like that okay so it depends on what your achievement is so even if you are singing let's say is national level or state level of course you can put it okay uh, it's not that you cannot and uh, uh, ranjit uh, not that everybody ha everything has to be related to job for example i still put my uh, even if you guys laugh it's fine uh, when i was in ug we went Uh, e competition in Vijay TV. Okay, you all are Gen Z. I don't know how many of you even watch Vijay TV or belong to that generation of mine. So when I was a teenager in my UG, there was this competition called EQ, and we went till the semi-finals. Now that achievement till date, it's still there. It would still be there in my resume because teamwork. Uh, I was a part of the music band, so teamwork comes through, and your perseverance. See, Vijay TV doesn't give. See, uh, you just qualify prelims and uh, uh, you know pre quarters and quarters and pre semis and semis. So you know you again been through a long selection process and you know you uh, uh, you are there. I mean, you have beat the others and you are there. You totally own that position that you are in. So I take a lot of pride in it. So uh, depends on the significance. Okay, so if you think it's really a significant achievement, even if not related to the job, I learned other skills. like i i learned that i was a great team player or i learned my leadership skills because i was managing my entire team you know i was leading my team if that is the case you can of course put it in a resume okay even though it's not really relevant to the job that you are doing okay uh, we never know and no experience goes a waste right so that this i strongly believe believe in life no experience goes a waste for example many times i have thought you know i did my mba but i am teaching law school uh, you know is there any relevance but i took it as an excellent opportunity to learn get out of my comfort zone because i was initially teaching business school students that was my area but then when they asked me if i can teach law school students i was initially skeptical but then i thought see this is the way you grow you explore you expand out of your comfort zone and i knew nothing about law no background in law nothing so i thought it would be an excellent opportunity for me to learn new things which i never know uh, you know may be useful somewhere down 20 years down in my life right uh, so uh, i th i mean as long as you are learning something new uh, i would say i mean you are not wasting your time right so uh, coming back to our resume so these are the different sections that you can have and you guys are clear about the difference between co curricular and extra curricular and achievements also the achievement that you think is really significant and if you can see when asked about it you should be able to speak about it in personal interview if they ask you about that you should be able to speak about it and convince them it is really a significant achievement like the way you know i did you know eq i maybe i have told this in in my my i first worked in infosys okay before i did my mba so there they were asking me about uh, what do you do outside of college so i was talking i was telling them that i'm a part of music band so i learn team work uh, and other skills like leadership and all that so they were impressed right so as long as you can convince them that it is quite a significant achievement and you learned skills you can of course have it right and hobbies also we'll come to hobbies there's an important point that i want to mention okay now action verbs now researched and wrote a paper on this and not 
involved in researching and writing of now uh, what are your thoughts will you do you think one is better or two is better do you think this is better or this is better the second one is better involved in the researching and writing of as i know it's late but uh, please bear with me for some more time and i'm i am definitely sure all of this uh, what i'm going to be discussing today will be of great use to you all when you are actually writing your resume right are you all with me yes ma'am yeah so neerja which do you think is better i think researching is uh, fine ma'am because if we research we will gain a lot of knowledge on it and uh, it can make our resume even more better no no i'm asking the way you write it researched and wrote a paper on some topic okay involved in researching and writing of now which is sounding better to you which would you use involved in the researching and writing of the second one is better i think ma'am okay i would say the first one is better you know you did that it's simple and straight and more powerful also i researched and wrote it only you should uh, uh, you know ensure that it is not misleading you know now that is why uh, i'm saying use action verbs now bullet point i wrote a paper on this or how do you think involved in writing a paper on that saves up your uh, uh, you know paper space okay uh, more redundant words so why you know beat around the bush when you can just say researched and wrote doesn't it come across as more powerful i don't know i think one is better but uh, sometimes you know it may be misleading for example you may not have done it you would have in law students especially you know they assist advocates okay so in that case you can say assisted my advocate in researching and writing who is involved in researching and writing of so when they write researched and wrote then it means that they wrote you know so sometimes uh, it may be misleading but if that is not the case if you only did the work you can uh, choose to write it in the first uh, form you know i did this i researched wrote it i executed i implemented you know don't say i of course bullet point implemented you know bullet point executed bullet point budgeted bullet boy uh, bullet point forecast i forecasted whatever it is finance words we we'll look at a set of keywords so do you all agree with me so if it is not yes. misleading i think you can go and just go straight away with the first you know it's very powerful makes you come across as a powerful person too you know i researched and wrote this straight straight to the point right so do you all agree with me adas yes ma'am okay thanks for the response so let me finish it quickly uh, see some common mistakes is incomplete contact in information i would say give two alternate phone numbers at least okay uh one is landline one is mobile or two mobile numbers minimum uh, two phone numbers you give because if one is not available at least they should be able to contact the other right so minimum two phone numbers either your landline or mobile or your two mobile numbers whatever it is your dad's number or mom's number but give two phone numbers okay and please do not use unprofessional uh, email addresses which is a strict no no and a big turn off for recruiters for example if it's neerja uh, just giving you an example neerja i'm sure you won't take off in school neerja or sweet neerja please avoid such uh, having such accounts only okay have a if you don't have an account you create a separate gmail account with an official name i did that so my pet name at um, my name at home is preeti so all my uh, email ids were were in preeti but then when i am applying to jobs uh, one uh, recruiter gave me a tip so you don't use two different names because there may be confusion sometimes so create a gmail account in your official name and i did that immediately the next day so my gmail id is sukanyaragunathan86@gmail.com so have a professional email address okay so uh, that always you know uh, that helps okay and uh, not only that unprofessional email address is a big turn off right and uh, not highlighting skills 
please highlight your skills uh, we'll talk about that uh, for a given job description let's say if they want you to be uh, uh, if they want a person who has experience in forecasting demand forecasting finance terms okay so you if you have done anything you know you use those keywords i have forecasted in my internship you know i did a project uh, underwent a project where i worked on this okay so please highlight your skills and please avoid spelling mistakes okay and uh, like i said confusing between co curricular and extra curricular not using keywords poor formatting and making it too long one page resume is ideal okay one page now i'll send this ppt to sir or neeja so you can all you know uh, use it uh, for your benefit so you this font is good uh, standard okay so if you maintain this font you can even fit your uh, fit all that you want to convey in one page on okay uh, so and some other important things to remember explain your gaps so not only during interviews in the resume itself you can mention as a bullet point so gap due to ill health or gap due to on site offer or uh, uh, you know in the resume itself you can mention your gap very briefly okay um, and highlight your learnings always now now uh, i also do a lot of mock interviews where we arrange external persons to come and uh, give uh, feedback okay so one most important thing that they always say is highlight we want we don't want to know what you did for example in your internship only uh, let's say you know you did a lot of cold calling marketing let's say you did a lot of cold calling and you did pitching okay now what did you learn we don't want to know what you did you know அங்க போய் நான் அதை செஞ்சேன் இது எனக்கு கதை எல்லாம் வேணாம் நீங்க என்ன கத்துக்கிட்டீங்க ஐ ஹோப் ஆல் ஆஃப் யூ அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் தமிழ் ஸ்பீக் தமிழ் ஓகே ஸோ கதை எல்லாம் வேணாம் நீங்க என்ன கத்துக்கிட்டீங்க அதை மட்டும் சொல்லுங்க திஸ் இஸ் லிட்ரலி வாட் தே சே ரைட் i really heard the external person say this you just you you, you should also highlight not just talk about it in interviews but in your resume only uh, we only want to know what you uh, learned okay just highlight your learnings okay emphasize that learned uh, in in uh, uh, because i teach law students a lot uh, a lot you know i learned drafting skills learned uh, contract you know constitutional law something they write you know but for business school you guys you can say uh, you learned business pitching uh cold calling uh, you know market uh, you you apply it to the concepts that you learned in college market segmentation targeting i learned concepts like these through actual application right so uh, that is how you highlight your learnings and always include the languages known okay uh, even if it's intermediate avoid um, see if you barely know a language then avoid it if you think your confidence level or uh, if you are intermediate at least you are able to speak uh, fluently or even if you can't write please do mention it okay uh, always include languages known because the more languages you know you come across as a person who uh, you know who is always up to learning new things you know who has not been wasting time so it gives a very good impression even if you know see i'm sure all of you will have at least two languages to add okay so please add it then we will all have a third language also our mother tongue whatever it is telugu tamil marathi whatever it is right so include languages known avoid mentioning hobbies in single words this is again a constant comment by external persons okay now reading or football or traveling do not do that i read non fiction favorite author this this the external really said you know they one lady got really pissed off are how many times do we tell you you know do not just say reading comma football comma traveling so if you say traveling uh, travel for leisure or travel for learning travel for adventure uh, travel to hill station something elaborate on it you know don't write an essay on it but just elaborate uh, to fit a bullet point says that one line space okay just elaborate a bit on that but please avoid writing it in uh, single words mentioning it as single words okay and uh, some facts about uh, resume see the average time that the recruiter spend is only 5 to 7 seconds okay and in my own experience of being an hr i did uh, it recruiting so they'll give us keywords okay uh, some hard skills of course and uh, they will say team player something some soft skills we were given a set of keywords so we need to type it in all job portals 
naukri indeed and only if you are res- if your resume has, uh, has it you know your resume will pop up otherwise it won't even pop up so now you know the importance of highlighting keywords okay so in the 5 to 7 seconds you need to capture the recruiter's attention how can you do that by highlighting all your keywords and the keywords also uh, based on the jd that you are applying to if you are looking at a marketing job digital marketing then your keyword is different if you are looking at uh, let's say hr job uh, a hr generalist your keyword is different if you are looking at a uh, joining a talent acquisition group then your keywords is different that is recruitment okay so you use keywords according to the job job description that's given to you and 76% of the resumes are discarded for unprofessional email address now you know the importance of having a professional email address those of you who still don't have a, a mail account with your official name please create one today tonight okay and uh, 88% rejection rate when you include a photo on your resume now this may not apply to mba students but law students generally they have this habit of having a photo or even if you guys are, uh, you know have a habit of attaching a photo to a resume do not do it because if they want a photo they will ask for it if some company wants your photo they will ask otherwise do not attach a photo right and about 60% of employers prefer applicants whose resumes are specifically tailored i would say it is mandatory to tailor your resume to the job that you are applying to and four out of five employers believe in the importance of soft non professional skills and abilities so it's recommended to in- indicate social technological and other such skills on your resume okay so use these are some keywords like executed budgeted facilitated managed for you guys mba and pgdms right like coordinated design delivered and avoid using repetition i have a list of keywords that uh, uh, in a word document which i'll share it with you okay these are some other set of uh, uh, soft skills you know or attitude Uh, that you can display multitasking leadership planning critical thinking people management etc right so these are really impro- impressive when you have it in your resume and one last thing we speak a lot about personal branding right but how many of us actually do it especially anna uh, uh, university you know where you have such excellent faculty make use of them please write articles and blog posts okay now uh, i was not a writer at all when i joined uh, in a teaching job but my team everybody is writing some article not just academic uh, movie review book review they are all writing something or the other and they are publishing it in uh, periodicals e magazines so they were huge inspiration to me to write my own article so of late i've got three articles published thanks to ifm law school and my team here if not for the inspiration i would never have thought i am a writer i wanted to be a writer because i read a lot of books i am a book lover but uh, because of my team here they inspired me to also write so when you add that one point in your resume i wrote an article you know you definitely stand out from the rest right wow this is a girl or this is a guy who writes in his free time you know who writes and who has had who has published his article that's really impressive right and please update your profile on linkedin and any other professional network that you are a part of because some companies they not only see if you have an account in linkedin but they also see what you post in linkedin you know your opinions are you a opinionated person are you an assertive person how do you put across your opinions they see all that okay especially in law schools a lot of uh, uh, companies uh, do their uh, screening on linkedin only based on the linkedin profile right and uh, your certification courses and your skill based training sessions please attend you know gain your skills at, as much as possible mba ve vandu nama or skill based course dane you know so please make use of the uh, resources available to you you know go to library uh you know and make use of the faculty we have excellent faculty there avangaloda sende oru oru research paper neenga phd pannunga na sollala oru paper eludunga oru paper podunga illa oru article eludunga neenga academics illana enakku romba i am not much of an academician but then i uh, read other books okay so the th- articles i wrote was totally you know uh, not academic pieces but uh, opinions about different things you know one was a movie review one was just about uh, uh, because i have been both a freelancer and a full time uh, uh, 
employee so which is better for women and one was totally about uh, how they portray i am a mother of a 10 year old daughter uh, you know so uh, the mother of a single child so how the society and ads you know they portray uh, families you know uh, it's always happy mom happy dad and two kids apdi da irukanuma ipo la family nariya single parents right and there are so many divorced and single parents out there and couples are choosing not to have any kids now you know they they choose to live child free ipdi irukracha evlo naal avanga advertisement la indha mari happy mom dad and the narrative way kaamipanga abindu my article was about that right so in the, uh, these are the things that you can do to you know establish yourself as a brand and once you do that uh, you don't have to search for jobs they will come to you right you can make jobs come to you by doing all these things right um so i wish you all the very best and be so good that they cannot ignore you they just cannot say no to you right so uh, thank you so much for your time guys thank you so much shake sir for the opportunity so if there is any doubt i can just quickly take any doubts i stopped sharp at 6 right time managed so any doubts that you may have uh, feel free to ask hello if we have no doubts we can wind up the session are you all there yes ma'am yes ma'am okay so do we have any doubts neerja no ma'am you gave us no, a very clear, 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 clear explanation ma'am we are understood it so well thank you so much aarti somebody was i think computing do you have anything to say sir aarti no ma'am oh. that was a good no, lecture that oh. was a good lecture oh thank you so much thank you so much so always a pleasure and anna na padichad anna university da so namma students ke edavadhu pannanu nu enak mind la irundite irundhathu so to start with uh, thanks a lot to shake sir in the opportunity kudutadukku uh, everybody knows tamil right sorry na appa yes. tamil la pesina without knowing ellarum tamil dane they know tamil right neerja yes ma'am everyone knows tamil ma'am great 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 so in fact we are planning a physical session also i would love to meet you all na actually anna university vandu or session pa 